as they say, haters are gonna hate. But sometimes celebs just can't shake it when the criticism is too mean, absurd, or hits too close to home. Having mastered the art of roasting online trolls, here are the harshest celeb clapbacks at their critics. Lizzo was thrust into the spotlight when her song Truth Hurts peaked at number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Slowly but surely, she smashed the record for the longest reign at number one by a female rapper. But that's not the only standard she was hoping to rise above. Most of the artist's career has been dedicated to destroying the narrow-minded, damaging beauty standards that plague Hollywood. Lizzo preaches self-love, whether she's posing on the cover of her platinum-selling album Cause I Love You or posting her curves on Instagram. But it's not always well-received. While fans don't need to search further than the comments section of Lizzo's Instagram account to find body shamers, her criticism has evolved beyond trolls. In 2020, former Biggest Loser trainer Gillian Michaels caught headlines for asking BuzzFeed's AM to DM, why are we celebrating her body? Cause it isn't gonna be awesome if she gets diabetes. Six months later, Lizzo dished out the ultimate clapback in the form of a social media PSA that showed her working out and flaunting her figure. She wrote, it may come as a surprise to some of y'all, but I'm not working out to have your ideal body type. I'm working out to have my ideal body type. And you know what type that is? None of your f***ing business. For someone who's wrapped filming The Good Place, Jamila Jamil has certainly dealt with a lot of people who are probably going to the bad place. The actress has positioned herself as an activist, regularly advocating for gender equality, LGBTQ plus rights, mental health and chronic illness awareness. While Jamil is known to dole out a strongly worded clapback or two, one of her biggest mic drops wasn't really about any of her causes. It happened when she shared a red carpet look on Twitter in November 2019 with the caption, and to think, I used to be self-conscious about having broad shoulders. Now I love taking up space. That's when a user bluntly replied, why would you leave the house looking that hideous? The Twitter user further went on to accuse the star of virtue signaling, and Jamil was not about to be backed into a corner. According to Scary Mummy, she wrote back in a since-removed tweet, you saw a woman you've never met dare to exude some confidence and thought, oh, I must tear her down. What a weird thought process. She likes her dress, but I don't personally like her dress. I have to tell her in the meanest way possible what a cool guy I am. Though the hater attempted to respond, Jamil had already dropped her mic and bruised the troll's ego. When it comes to trolls, it takes one to know one. Chrissy Teigen is a clapback queen because she also happens to be one of Hollywood's resident internet trolls. The world saw as much when she was blocked by the president on Twitter in July 2017. Boasting about her permanent ban from his public feed, she wrote, After nine years of hating Donald J. Trump, telling him, lol, no one likes you, was the straw. Needless to say, Tigan was already on a clapback roll when a user told the star the ban was probably the best thing that would ever happen to her. According to Mashable, the troll added in a since-deleted tweet, Congrats on peaking. That's when Tigan posted a photo from Lake Como, Italy, with her EGOT-winning husband, John Legend. She then said in a since-removed tweet, I have a best-selling book, Great Boobs, a family I love, I'm literally eating pasta on a lake in Italy, and I married rich. The clapback was so on point that Batwoman actress Ruby Rose chimed in with, they really are great boobs. Tigan promptly tried to save Rose's tweet for posterity, but the troll set his account to protected. Few celebs are as casually caustic as Rihanna is to her haters. They call her bad gal Riri for a reason. The star regularly drops one-liners and memes that are so well-placed they deserve their own museum exhibit. It's hard to choose the single clapback that outshines them all, between her brief feud with Sierra and whatever went down with Azalea Banks. There was even that time Amanda Bynes went on a wildly inappropriate tweet spree and Riri casually tweeted, you see what happens when they cancel intervention? If anything, the best Rihanna clapbacks are the ones where she says absolutely nothing while saying everything. TLC's t Boz and Chili learned this the hard way after a 2013 interview with Sunrise Australia, where they allegedly singled out Rihanna for showing skin in her music videos, though they later claimed this wasn't the case. t Boz said, 
every time I see you, you don't have to be naked. We became the biggest girl selling group of all time with our clothes on. It's easy to sell sex. How did Queen Riri respond? According to Rolling Stone, with little more than changing her Twitter header to a scantily clad photo of TLC from their heyday in the 90s. Cher's Twitter feed rests somewhere firmly between friending your high school classmate's mother on Facebook and hallucinating during a fever dream. In short, it's chaotic, but chaotically addicting. She's functioning on a higher plane, where all caps and emojis take the place of legible punctuation and reason is just a suggestion, not a rule. But the best tweets have to be her clapbacks. Cher doesn't just use her Twitter to drag on about the daily trappings of disco fame, she also uses it for activism, which led to the six-word comeback that basically defined her Twitter career. In 2017, when Donald Trump ordered an end to DACA, which protected certain undocumented immigrant children from deportation, Cher urged her followers, take a dreamer into their home and protect them. She planned to do the same, but one fan expressed their doubts, admitting, I'll believe it when I see it. Cher had nothing else to say but, then keep your eyes open. When BB Rexa finally got the Grammy nomination she was working towards for years in 2019, she should have been excited. Instead, she was met with another disappointment. As she explained in a scathing Instagram clapback, her team reached out to a number of designers to create a custom red carpet look for the awards show, but a large swath of them refused to dress her because she was supposedly too big at a size 8. Rexa snapped on Instagram, If a size 6, 8 is too big, then I don't know what to tell you. Then I don't want to wear your f***ing dresses, because that's crazy. You're saying that all the women in the world that are a size 8 and up are not beautiful and they cannot wear your dresses. So all the people that said that I'm thick and I can't wear dresses, f*** you, I don't want to wear your f***ing dresses. According to USA Today, a number of designers reached out to the singer after her Instagram clapback made headlines. Perhaps Rex's best clapback of all came on the red carpet when she twirled in her scarlet gown and proclaimed, You wish you would have dressed my fat ass. A couple of months before Ashton Kutcher was put through the ringer following the release of Demi Moore's shocking memoir Inside Out, he was already fed up with the tabloids. Decades of fame will do that. Though the actor lives a relatively low-key lifestyle with his That 70s Show co-star turned wife Mila Kunis, he did take a brief reprieve from saving the world to feed into the drama after an In Touch Weekly report claimed he was having marital problems in June 2019. In an Instagram video, Kutcher pretended he was just discovering that his marriage was over while reading the article next to his wife. Babe, what's happening? What's going on? It's over between us. It's over between us? Yeah. Oh my God, what are we going to do? I felt suffocated. Continuing to read the tabloid cover, Kunis let her husband know that he ruined his shot when his alleged very dark secret was exposed. Though Kunis didn't know exactly what that secret was, Kutcher admitted it must have been really dark if it ruined their marriage. I take the kids. Listen, it's not easy being the world's youngest self-made billionaire. Sometimes you just have to laugh at the struggle. Perhaps this is how Kylie Jenner mastered the practice of a self-own as a clapback. When it's done well, and she has a documented history of doing it well, it's a conversation-ending mic drop. Maybe Chrissy Teigen needs to watch out because someone's coming for her Twitter throne. In 2016, years before Forbes bestowed the highest honor of self-made billionaire on the youngest of Kris Jenner's brood, Kylie put forth the clapback to end all clapbacks. When a random Twitter user claimed, Kylie Jenner looks like a 14-year-old prostitute. She replied, I don't know, I feel like I look like a 19-year-old prostitute. This type of cell phone became her patented brand of shutting down the haters. In April 2020, Jenner snapped back that she, quote, birthed a baby when an Instagram user said she looked better back in 2017. She did it a second time that year when a user told her to fix her dye job. According to E! News, she commented back, I know, bitch, it's been a long day. Ariana Grande has massively evolved from her past life as, well, a donut licker. The star is a fully-fledged feminist, even penning what Vanity Fair described as a feminist manifesto to shut down Hollywood's double standards. Still, no clapback has ever been more poignant than when she fearlessly spoke out after a fan blamed her for her ex-boyfriend rapper Mac Miller's substance abuse problem months before his tragic overdose. In a May 2018 tweet, the fan claimed, 
Mac Miller totaling his G-Wagon and getting a DUI after Ariana Grande dumped him for another dude after he poured his heart out on a 10-song album to her called The Divine Feminine is just the most heartbreaking thing happening in Hollywood. This hit a nerve with Grande, who admitted that dealing with Miller's substance abuse issues was hard and scary. She was not having that criticism, and she fired back. How absurd that you minimize female self-respect and self-worth by saying someone should stay in a toxic relationship because he wrote an album about them. I am not a babysitter or a mother, and no woman should feel that they need to be. I have cared for him and tried to support his sobriety and prayed for his balance for years. But shaming, blaming women for a man's inability to keep his together is a very major problem. I will continue to pray from the bottom of my heart that he figures it all out and that any other woman in this position does as well. So what did Diplo ever do to anyone? It must be the price of being a famous person dating an even more famous person. Remember way back when Katy Perry dated Diplo for like a month in 2014? He was apparently still paying for it years later. In the lead-up to dropping her 2017 album Witness, Katy Perry did a 72-hour live stream, during which she spoke to James Corden and ranked three of her famous exes on their performance in bed. They're all amazing lovers, of course and they I, are. I want to have sex with all of them after I get out of this place. <laughs> Once she was forced to answer, John Mayer took the top spot, Orlando Bloom was in the middle, and Diplo came in last. Apparently, it wasn't memorable for him either. That, or he was just pulling a Mariah Carey. <laughs> I don't know her. After Perry's ranking hit headlines, Diplo casually revealed on Twitter, I don't even remember having sex. He followed that up with another tweet saying, I won the bronze medal in the Sex Olympics. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.